Welcome to Big Boy Travel. Today we're exploring high above Hallstatt, Austria for some stunning views and to show you what to expect during a tour of the world's oldest salt mine. Hallstatt, Austria is one of the most beautiful places on the planet. And thanks to its 7,000 year old salt mine, it also played a very influential role in shaping the culture of early day Europe. To get hands on with this history, we're going to leave the popular village center and ride the funicular lift over 1,100 feet over the heart of Hallstatt for an exciting tour of the world's oldest salt mine. During the tour, we'll be getting dressed up in miner's clothes to learn about the history, we'll test out the thrilling wooden slides, we get to see the oldest wooden staircase in all of Europe, and we'll get to take a ride on the underground miner's train. We will also have plenty of time to see the breathtaking panoramic views over Lake Hallstatt at the World Heritage Skywalk before heading back down to the village. We have a very comprehensive companion guide to this video available for free on our website, bigboytravel.com. It covers everything you need to know about the Hallstatt salt mine from common questions for your visit to the history of the mine itself, and lots of interesting details about every one of the locations that we're going to visit in this video. We also have a bunch of other YouTube videos on Hallstatt covering all of the best things you need to see, plus some insider tips on how to plan your visit. Before we can tour the salt mine in Hallstatt, it's very important that we share some logistical tips with you, because it actually sits over 1,100 feet above the heart of town. That's actually quite a bit taller than even the top of the Eiffel Tower. But with some advanced planning, you can save yourself a strenuous hike and take the convenient funicular lift to the top of the hill. Let's take a look at it from a different angle so you can truly see what we're talking about. Most visitors will arrive to Hallstatt by train, which requires a ferry ride from across the lake to the heart of town, but you'll still be a 15 minute walk away from the salt mine lift. If you watched our How to Get to Hallstatt video, you know that it's actually faster to arrive by bus than the train, and you'll get dropped off very close to the salt mine lift. While you could take a very steep 60 minute hike up instead, we are actually gonna take the funicular up to do the salt mine tour, and when it's over, we'll do a very manageable 30 minute hike back down the hill for some beautiful views across the lake. As we head on over to the funicular lift, it's quite helpful to highlight some of the history of the Hallstatt salt mine. With activity dating back 7,000 years, this is the oldest salt mine in the world, and it's one of the main reasons why you should visit. To put it in the context, there's been salt mining going on in Hallstatt before there was a Rome, and even before the pyramids were built in Egypt. While there are three additional salt mines in the region that can be toured, which we will highlight at the end of this video, it is the unmatched history in Hallstatt that makes it our favorite one to visit. The name Hallstatt literally means place of the salt, and it is this white gold to help the early day town prosper. Salt was so vital to everyday life before refrigeration that even a tiny, sleepy little village like Hallstatt could become very powerful. In the Iron Age, the village was so influential across Europe that an entire period of history is known as the Hallstatt era. Thanks to thousands of well-preserved prehistoric artifacts, we now know that the Hallstatt culture was the predominant material culture in all of Central Europe from 800 to 400 BC, which stretched from France in the west all the way to the Baltic Sea in the east. The most important discoveries to date have been the 3,000-year-old man in salt, a 7,000-year-old antler pickaxe, the Bronze Age graveyard, and Europe's oldest wooden staircase. We will get to see many of these items up close in this video during the salt mine tour and afterwards with a visit to the Hallstatt Museum near the lakefront. If you are also going to Vienna as part of your trip to Austria, you'll definitely want to stop by the Natural History Museum as it has a large area dedicated to the extraordinary finds in Hallstatt and exhibits which further illustrate how far its culture reached. The Natural History Museum should already be on your must-visit list in Vienna anyway, as it is a palace-like building housing over 30 million artifacts. We will have a separate video covering everything you need to see at this wonderful museum, including the Hallstatt section, and our favorite thing on display, which is the 30,000-year-old Venus of Willendorf. Now that we know some of the history and have all of the logistics sorted out, let's head to the Salt Mine Visitor Center and begin our journey to the top of Hallstatt. 
It's here that you'll catch your first glimpse of the funicular lift that'll take us up Salt Hill. In addition to being close to the Hallstatt Lawn bus stop, drivers will be very happy that it's also right next to the main parking lot. Inside the visitor center, you can find bathrooms and very convenient bag lockers for storing your things while you go on the salt mine tour. There's a cash desk for buying tickets at the visitor center, plus there's free Wi-Fi in case you want to download their audio app. The large gift shop has pretty much any salt-related thing you can think of, and we appreciate that they have smaller items that'll actually fit in your luggage. Even if you don't buy anything, you will still get a small souvenir salt shaker at the end of your salt mine tour. Don't leave the visitor center without seeing the themed salt displays as they're really fun to take photos with. Leaving the visitor center behind, it's time to catch our ride. The glass-walled funicular lift majestically glides over 1,100 feet up Salt Hill in just three minutes. As you ascend the track, you'll get amazing views over the Lawn neighborhood and Lake Hallstatt. There will be even more breathtaking views at the World Heritage Skywalk, which we'll visit later in this video after the salt mine tour. The standard fare for the funicular lift is a combo ticket that actually includes your guided tour of the salt mine. We highly suggest booking your ticket online before your visit so you can lock in your preferred tour time. This is important as you're going to need to commit three to four full hours for the entire experience, including your round trip journey, a tour of the salt mine, and a visit to the skywalk. So being strategic about when you fit these four hours into your day is going to ensure that you have plenty of time to see additional sites in Hallstatt. The winter hours are something very important for us to point out as the salt mine actually closes for maintenance for four weeks every winter from mid-January to mid-February, but the funicular lift itself actually stays open all year so you can come up anytime and get great views. We have another video and guide covering all of the best things to do in Hallstatt during the winter so if that's when you're coming definitely check those out as well. While the salt mine tour itself is not accessible for wheelchairs or strollers, luckily the funicular lift and the surrounding trails to the skywalk are barrier free, so you can take them even if you have limited mobility. And if you are planning on just riding the lift up but skipping the salt mine tour, you can get a half price ticket at the visitor center cash desk. Make sure you start your ascension 30 minutes before your tour time, and when you get to the top of the funicular, don't forget to turn around and take in one more gorgeous view before you move on. As you exit the funicular, you'll want to take the stairs on your left for the trail to the salt mine entrance, but there's also a handy elevator to help you get to the trail if you keep going straight. There are also some very playful signs to help point you in the right direction. It can be tempting to head right to the Rudolph's Tower and Skywalk, but you really can't afford to be late for your salt mine tour, so make sure to go straight to the trail for your tour and come back to the Rudolph's Tower after it's over. Looking at it from a bird's eye view, you'll see where the lift comes up near the Tower and Skywalk, and the salt mine entrance is at the end of the valley, which requires a 15 minute walk to get to via the salt mine trail. Realizing that you're over 350 meters above the village, it's crazy to think that people were already mining salt up here thousands of years ago. As you follow the paved path up to the salt mine entrance, you're entering the Hochtal, or High Valley. It was here in the valley where the prehistoric salt miners of Hallstrat built the thriving community. Around 3,000 years ago, the prosperous settlement had already grown to a few hundred people, which in that time was actually one of the largest in all of Europe outside of Greece. Unfortunately, the prehistoric village was buried in a huge landslide in 350 BC. It wasn't until a vast Bronze Age graveyard was found in the 1800s that the full scope of Hallstatt's influence was brought back to life again. From 1846 on, the cemetery was systematically excavated, which unveiled troves of artifacts thousands of years old. So far, over 1,500 graves have been examined, and along the trail you can find an exhibition hall that has pottery fragments and a human skeleton dressed in ancient clothing. Pay special attention to the Hallstatt-style swirled clothespins near the shoulders, as this Celtic design is very iconic for early-day Hallstatt fashion. To this day, versions of this jewelry are sold in the souvenir shops in town. 
In ancient Hallstatt, even the working middle class was very wealthy as their graves are lined with many rich artifacts that would normally only be found in the tombs of princes. Life was also very colorful in ancient Hallstatt, as seen through the numerous pattern fabrics and woven textiles that have been found. The most impactful items found in the Bronze Age graveyard are the rich items that show how vast and wide-reaching Hallstatt's trading was. There have been rare glass bowls from Italy, dozens of daggers, and some elaborately decorated swords, including one made out of ivory from Africa that's inlaid with amber from the Baltic. Not only was Hallstatt one of the wealthiest villages in all of Europe during the time of the graveyard, but the finds have also established its influence over the culture of all of Central Europe, which is why the period of time from 800 to 400 BC is now known as the Hallstatt era. The mine manager when the Bronze Age graveyard is found was Johann Georg Ramsar, and he knew right away that this find was much more important than the other ancient discoveries previously found in the valley. The best thing is that Ramsauer had preservation in mind and was very detailed in his documentation, including scale drawings with renowned precision. People were so captivated by the early findings that even the Austrian Emperor Franz Josef and his wife Sisi were on hand for a grave opening. Part of what made the graveyard extra mesmerizing when it was found in the 1800s is that the average level of wealth in ancient Hallstatt was so unbelievably high. This was in direct contrast to the low wages that the miners had been getting since the Middle Ages, as the salt profits had been going directly to the coffers of the Habsburg's royal treasury. Their poor pay was offset by some good fringe benefits, including food rations, health care, disability coverage, and an exemption from military service, but it was far from the riches that the miners were able to take in during the Bronze Age. The Natural History Museum in Vienna is still doing excavations near the salt mine trail every summer. You can often see them working while you pass by, and they're going to be doing it for quite some time, as it's estimated that there are at least 6,000 graves in the ancient cemetery. As you hunt for archaeologists, also make sure to check out the tall reflective trail markers which are meant to be a mirror into the past. They contain a lot of interesting facts about the history of the salt mine and they also line up with the audio guide. After a 15 minute walk, you'll come to the Knoppen House or Miner's House to join your guided tour. You'll be happy to know that the multilingual tour is primarily in English, and while best suited for school age children and up, you can actually do the tour as young as 4 years old, but the mine is not accessible for strollers or wheelchairs. The experience begins quite immersively as you start your journey by getting dressed up in miner's gear. These outfits slide right over your normal clothes, and we recommend wearing long pants, a long shirt, and sturdy shoes for your tour. As you begin your tour orientation, it's fun to know a little bit of miner's lingo. Our favorites are Nappen, which means miner, Glug Alf, which is a traditional send-off, meaning good luck, and that the miner's jackets have 29 buttons on the front of them, which is an homage to their patron, St. Barbara, who died at the age of 29. After a short walk up from the Knoppen House, your group will reach the Christina Tunnel that was opened in 1719. It's here that your tour moves underground. It takes around 200 meters of walking to reach the salt line. This is considered the salt dome, and at that point some of the rock is up to 90% salt. The humidity is pretty constant throughout the tunnels and tour, and the temperature is also constant at 46 degrees Fahrenheit. This steady environment and heavy salt content is what led to the discovery of the man in salt in the 1700s. Miners found a body compressed in the ancient part of the mine, which was 3,000 years old, and it still had bits of skin and hair on it. After the long walk down the Christina Tunnel, the Hallstatt Salt Mine Tour really starts to get exciting. It's here that you get to ride on the first of two traditional wooden miner slides. At 79 feet long, the first one is considered your practice run, as the second slide at the end of the tour is much longer. 24 meters, and that's only for practice. <laughs> but no worries. <laughs> if someone of you does about to slide down, you can walk down the stairs over here at the right and up the slide. But I would recommend we are going to slide down. Riding down the slides is definitely a highlight of the tour. Bye, see you down there. Woo! 
you'll keep your hands and feet up and don't need to worry about braking as it runs long enough for you to naturally stop at the bottom. Through medieval times, the salt miners really used the slides to quickly get between the 12 levels of the mines known as horizons, although it was eventually modernized by adding elevators. There's also stairs if you don't want to do the slide, but it's tons of fun to race your friends. At the bottom of the first slide, you can get hands-on with huge illuminated blocks of rock salt, and it's this part of the tour that you really start to dive into the history of the salt mine. It's fascinating to learn that 250 million years ago, the entire area around Hallstatt was a primordial sea. Around 100 million years ago, the rise of the Alps engulfed the remnants of the sea, creating a large salt deposit. This salt was eventually discovered during the Stone Age, and mining has been going on in Hallstatt for 7,000 years. If this early era of history interests you, you should also check out our video and guide on the Hallstatt Ice Cave. Located just outside of town, you'll be able to tour the famous ice cave, see some amazing views at the Five Finger Skywalk, and can hike on the bedrock of the Primordial Sea where you'll see tons of fish fossils. After learning about the prehistoric sea, you get to do the most exciting thing of the entire salt mine tour, which is the second miner slide. Bye bye! Don't forget to smile! Ah, <laughs> uh, it's really fast. This second slide is 210 feet long, which is the largest wooden slide in Europe. It takes a souvenir photo at the end and it even tracks your speed. After the thrilling slides, you'll have a little bit of time to relax and reflect as you'll see a light show over an underground lake. This will take you all the way from the primordial sea through the Stone Age history of the mine. On the final leg of the salt mine tour, we continued the journey through history by entering the Bronze Age Cinema. It's here that we get to see Europe's oldest wooden staircase. Dating back to 1344 BC, it was unique innovations like this modular wooden staircase that helped the Hallstatt salt mine boom from the Bronze Age into the Iron Age. Very high tech projections will let you see how hard the people of early day Hallstatt worked in the mines. The Hallstatt Salt Mine also has a much longer private tour option that covers the Bronze Age more in depth. It lets you visit some of the hidden prehistoric areas of the mine, and you get to use their virtual reality to simulate walking through the mine during prehistoric times. With your tour inside the Hallstatt Salt Mine coming to an end, you get to ride the final 400 meters out to the exit on the exciting miner's train. This single file train is so smooth that it feels like it's gliding along, but visitors who are quite tall may need to duck their heads. As you rest your feet, the extended ride on the train helps to put it into perspective on how far underground you are. As you walk back down the salt trail after your mine tour, you'll be greeted by sweeping views of the upper valley toward Lake Hallstatt. Especially late in the year, the upper valley actually gets a lot more sun in the afternoon than the village along the lake does, and it's no wonder that the early Celtic people in Hallstatt would bury their dead facing east toward both the sunrise and Lake Hallstatt. Adding to the beauty of the view is a stunning steel elevated footbridge spanning the width of the small gorge like an industrial piece of art. This modern bridge was made to resemble a classic railroad lift bridge, and paired with the funicular lift, it has made barrier-free access available to the skywalk all the way from the lower valley. The views both of and on the bridge are absolutely gorgeous no matter what time of year it is, and if you're lucky enough to get up here in the winter, you won't be disappointed. The bridge is awesome, has panoramic views of the lake and some nearby mountains. As we approach the Rudolph's Tower, we will be visiting both the restaurant up top and the viewpoint down below, known as the Skywalk. And looking to your left, you'll get one more view of the Hochtal Valley where the salt mine tour was. Crossing the bridge is really a 360 degree experience as you'll truly have unbelievable panoramas no matter which direction you look. It's important to take your time and not rush to fully take it all in. Our next stop is the Rudolph's Tower, which greets all visitors at the end of the footbridge. 
This commanding structure was first built in 1284 as a defensive tower for the salt mine by the Duke of Austria and future Habsburg ruler Albrecht I. The tower is named after his father, Rudolf, who was the first king in the Habsburgs' epic dynasty. Not long after it was built, the Rudolf's Tower got its first action in the Salt Wars of the 1200s. At the time, the Prince Archbishop of Salzburg was a rival trying to wipe out all of the regional salt mines that competed with his own in the town of Hallein. The tower held up extremely well protecting Hallstatt, which was very important, as the salt was so valuable that the mine was like a license to print money. This potential of endless wealth is why the region was included as part of the Habsburg's royal treasury, or Kammergut. By the year 1313, the tower became the residence of the Hallstatt salt mine manager, and it remained so for over 640 years. During this time, many famous people of the day came to visit the tower, such as Emperor Maximilian, Emperor Franz Josef, and Empress Sisi. After a fire in the 1800s, the tower was renovated and expanded by mine manager Johann Georg Ramsauer, who had discovered the Hallstatt Cemetery. The expansion of the tower was very much needed as Ramsauer, who worked at the mine since the age of 13, had a staggering 22 children. It was here that he documented his work on the ancient cemetery while often doing drawings in the attic where he stored prehistoric artifacts. Today you can still find the desk where Ramsauer worked along with some fine examples of his grave drawings inside the tower. With medieval roots, the tower has an unrivaled perch over Lake Hallstatt and has served as a restaurant since 1960. This is one of our favorite places to grab food or a drink in Hallstatt as the views are so amazing and you even get little peeks out onto the skywalk which we'll end up visiting next. The long terrace at the Rudolfs Tower is also considered the sunniest place in Hallstatt. Late in the year the mountains actually block the direct sunlight to the lakefront but not here at the tower. By the winter solstice, only a single beam of light peeks over the mountains and it directly hits the tower like a spotlight, which is quite a phenomenon. The menu at the restaurant is actually pretty robust, but if we were going to give a recommendation, it would be for a traditional beer and Austrian schnitzel. During our entire time at the Rudolfs Tower, we've been getting teased by wonderful views at the Skywalk Lookout, so let's go down and check that out as well. This is the World Heritage Viewpoint up by the Hallstatt Salt Mine. We are walking there right now to get some amazing views over the city and lake. Up top is Dockshine, that's where Five Fingers are, where I'll also have a video on. But it's the view from the Skywalk that lets you know why they call it the top of Hallstatt. From sweeping to breathtaking to gorgeous, there are so many different adjectives to describe the view and I don't think any of them really do it justice. The triangular shaped skywalk juts out an impressive 40 feet from the cliffside to hang above the lakeside village like the pointed bow of a ship overlooking the water. While you're suspended almost 1200 feet above the village below, which is taller than the Eiffel Tower, it can be very tempting to spread out your arms at the end of the platform like your Kate Winslet riding on the Titanic. Please don't rush when you're at the Skywalk, as you really should slow down and take some time to both relax and view the platform from every single angle. Especially if you've already been exploring around Hallstatt, it is so much fun to see things that you'll recognize from a different perspective at the Skywalk. Whether it's your first time in town, or if you are a Hallstatt veteran, there are a number of important landmarks from this vantage point that we feel are worth pointing out. From the Skywalk, Let's look out onto the vast landscape together as we scan it in a clockwise fashion. The first thing to inspect is the Hallstatt village located directly below you. You'll be able to see the panoramic trail which we'll take soon down to the village, plus the wonderful town of Hallstatt itself that fans out like a river delta into the lake. This half circle shape is actually because Hallstatt is built on top of thousands of years of rubble that has been washed down Salt Hill. Some of the best salt related attractions in the village are the Hallstatt Museum, which has many prehistoric artifacts on display, the famous Market Square, where the town gained its market rights, plus the churches, which were funded by the salt miners, and one of them even has a bone chapel with painted human skulls. We have another YouTube video covering the village center in very great detail. 
Plus, we have a free walking tour guide available for free on our website, bigboytravel.com. Looking around clockwise, we next get to Lake Hallstatt itself, which is the second deepest in Austria. This fjord-like lake has year-round ferry service over to the train station, and if you've read our guide, you know that the recreational boat rentals are one of the top 10 things to do in town. Among the options, you can even take a tour on the water in one of the traditional wooden salt boats. Directly across the lake from the Skywalk is the tiny Hallstatt train station which opened in the 1800s and is connected to town by the Stephanie Lake Ferry. Make sure to check out our How to Get to Hallstatt video and guide if you have questions on how to use the train. Next to the train station is the majestic Castle Grube, which is surrounded by folklore. One of the most interesting residents was a wealthy count who was the salt administrator in the 1600s. He had a private crypt in the Catholic Church in Hallstatt for his death and in his will, he demanded that his body be taken back across the lake to Castle Grube every 50 years. Looking above the Obertraun neighborhood, you will see where you get to take the cable car up to tour the Hallstatt Ice Cave. We have a full guide and video covering what to expect during this experience, as the ice cave is something you really don't want to miss. You will tour huge caverns surrounded by giant ice formations, and even get to see where they found an ancient cave bear skull. Riding one level further on the cable car plus a hike will bring you to the wonderful Five Fingers Lookout. If you're enjoying this view from the Skywalk, you're really going to love the platform at the Five Fingers as it's more than four times as high at almost 5,300 feet above the village, which is staggering as it means you're a full mile above Hallstatt. Looking back down toward the lakefront on your right, you'll see the Lawn neighborhood, which has the Hallstatt bus stop, but it also has one of the hidden gems in town, which is the Bathing Island. This island was formed out of rubble when they made the road tunnel underneath Hallstatt in the 1960s, and it's definitely one of the best places to relax in the sun during the summer. The island is an excellent oasis no matter what time of year it is, and it's no wonder that the bridges have become a darling of social media photos. If you're in Hallstatt with kids, you'll really love this island as it also has a wonderful playground next to it. Another hidden gem is located just beyond the bathing island, which is the long valley known as the Ischerental. This is the last place that we want to point out as part of our view from the Skywalk, and it's one of the favorite places for locals from Hallstatt to go hiking. The entrance to the valley has both the funicular lift that you take to get up Salt Hill, plus the main parking lot in Hallstatt, and lots of beautiful scenery. The complete valley hike takes two to three hours round trip, and during your time on the wooded path, you'll pass by several streams and numerous waterfalls, including the Schleier Fall, which has a 450 foot tall sheer drop. Hopefully now that we pointed out all the landmarks, the view seems that much more impressive. Let's take one more peek at the Rudolph's Tower before we begin our journey down to the village. With your time at the Skywalk over, you can take the funicular lift back down Salt Hill the same way you came up, but we prefer to take the enjoyable panorama trail right down to the heart of Hallstatt. While this switchback path would be a strenuous 60 minute hike going up, it only takes 30 minutes going down and actually feels quite gradual. Not far into your hike, you'll run into the entrance for the salt mine's Franz Josef Tunnel. It was here that the 7,000-year-old antler pickaxe was found, which proved Hallstatt's mine was the oldest one in the world. It doesn't take very long on the path to start seeing views so grand that you know why it's called the Panorama Trail. We tend to stop at every few switchbacks just in awe of how beautiful it is. Making our way further down the trail, we come to our favorite viewpoint, which has a bright red piece of art and the first glimpses of the mighty Millbrook waterfall, which roars through Hallstatt with a series of tiered drops down the cliffside. This striking waterfall, along with the beautiful wooded scenery and stunning views are why you really should consider taking the trail back down to the village. The wonderful trail has been used to connect the Hallstatt salt mine to the lakefront for thousands of years. In the beginning, the rock salt was cut from the mine in unique heart-shaped blocks and carried down the mountainside. As early as the 1300s, new extraction techniques were being used to allow the salt to be leached out of the mine with water and funneled down the hill as soupy brine to be further processed in the heart of the village. This salt processing was very lumber intensive and by the 1500s, Hallstatt was nearly deforested. To help outsource some of the processing, 
the world's oldest salt brine pipeline was opened in 1602. This innovative pipeline was created by connecting 13,000 hollowed out logs all the way to Ebenzee, which is 25 miles to the north. The remnants of this pipeline also make for a good alternative hiking route up to the salt mine and skywalk. Toward the bottom of the panorama trail you get to the wonderful Müllerstieg, or Miller Step, which lets you look out over the rooftops of the village and is considered by many people to be the most beautiful viewpoint in all of Hallstatt. The term Müllerstieg is pretty interesting as it's named after the large mansions that you're passing by near the waterfall. During medieval times, these homes were mills that were used to grind flour for the miners. Even when the village is packed with tourists, the Müllerstieg is so calm and relaxing. We especially love the view after fresh snow in the winter. To us, the rooftops almost look like a bunch of fluffy marshmallows peering over the lake. Toward the bottom of the panorama trail, it's totally fine to get sidetracked looking at some of the beautiful homes, as all of the paths will eventually lead down to the lake. Reaching the bottom of the panorama trail, you'll be walking in the heart of the village, and there's one final salt-related stop that we're going to take in this video, which is the Hallstatt Museum. While it may look quaint, this museum has a vast collection of ancient salt mine artifacts and also highlights various other key points from Hallstatt's 7,000 years of history. Outside of the museum, you'll find a replica of Europe's oldest wooden stairs, which we saw on the salt mine tour, an oversized chessboard that's fun to play with, plus a monument to the famous salt mine manager, Johann Georg Ramsauer. The very location of the Hallstatt Museum is deeply rooted to the salt mine, as for over 400 years this square was home to the humongous salt pan house, which was used to process the soupy brine into raw salt by boiling off the water. Unfortunately, the pan house burned down in the Great Fire of 1750, which started in the market square and damaged most of Hallstatt's village center. Inside the museum, you can learn a lot more about the fire along with viewing some of the ancient artifacts from the salt mine. One of our favorite things on display is the prehistoric cave bear skull, which was found in the Hallstatt Ice Cave. We've been to Hallstatt many times and feel like we still discover something new every time we go to the museum. Recently, we learned about the rock carrying women, who were the wives of the salt miners that were forced into hard labor in the 1700s through the end of the 1800s. Because of an economic downturn, the women would have to make the round trip journey up the grueling panorama trail and pass the current salt mine entrance twice a day. They would carry large backpacks full of supplies on the way up, and would then have to haul up to 100 pounds of salt rock the entire way back down, often even if they were far into pregnancy. Leaving the museum, you'll definitely want to go across the street and see the ancient ruins below the Yanu Sports Shop. This area of town was once home to the Habsburg's mini castle during the Middle Ages, and in the basement of the sport shop, you can see its remnants plus many finds from Roman times. In this living museum, you'll be able to walk by a nearly 2,000 year old Roman road, see the ruins of a Roman bath, and see what remains of a medieval blacksmith. From the Yanu sport shop, you're in a really great position to see the rest of Hallstatt. And there's a lot to see, from beautiful attractions to many sites that also have salt mine connections. Some of these include the former Salt Administration Building, which is now one of our favorite hotels in town and has excellent lakeside dining. The nearby Market Square, which is very colorful and has tons of hidden salt mine connections. The two main churches in town, which were funded by the salt miners and especially make sure to go up to the Catholic Church, which has a beautiful cemetery, a bone chapel with painted human skulls, and the inside has a couple different altars with salt mine connections, as there's one for St. Barbara, who was their patron saint, and the so-called miner's altar, which was partly stolen in a famous art heist. And along the waterfront, you can even take a boat cruise inside of a traditional wooden salt boat. We have another video covering all of the best things that you need to see in the center of the village. Plus we have a free Hallstatt walking tour guide available on our website bigboytravel.com that has an interactive map which you can use to explore the town. While you're on our website, also make sure to check out the full comprehensive guide covering the Hallstatt salt mine that's a companion to the video you're watching now. 
The Hallstatt salt mine is our favorite to tour, but there are also three others in the region worth quickly pointing out while you plan out your itinerary to Austria. The first is in Hallein, which was once a rival to Hallstatt and is the one that made Salzburg very wealthy in the Middle Ages. This mine is quite unique as it has a recreated Celtic village that you can visit in conjunction with the salt mine tour, and during the tour itself you actually get to cross the Austrian-German border wall underground. And not far from the Hallein salt mine, you can take the lift up the Durmberg mountain to take a ride on the Keltenblitz Summer Luge. The second mine worth pointing out in the region is in Berchtesgaden, Germany, located just 13 miles south of Salzburg. This salt mine is actually the easiest to get to as there's a bus stop on the direct line from Salzburg right next to the entrance. The tour itself is very good and covers all of the bases that you'd want to experience in a salt mine, but there's an added bonus as it's actually right next to a salt spa as well. Like Hallstatt, the village of Berchtesgaden is also one of the best side trips you can take from Salzburg and has many days worth of activities. We have a full guide and numerous videos covering Berchtesgaden including the World War II sites, the Königssee or King's Lake, plus numerous hidden gems and of course Old Town. The final salt mine in the region to point out is in Altasse. This mine has a beautiful salt chapel but is most famous as the location for the real life monuments men. During World War II, the Third Reich had hidden a bunch of priceless art in the mine, and later on the story became a blockbuster Hollywood movie. We really would like to thank you for watching this comprehensive video on the Hallstatt salt mine. Hopefully you feel better prepared and inspired for your visit. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like it, leave us a comment, and subscribe for even more great content from Big Boy Travel. Thank you again for watching and subscribing to our YouTube channel. We'll see you again soon.